All right, cool. We are live, I believe. Um, as always, I get a little weirded out by having uh, like a cam showing me on the side here. So anyways, uh, sorry about the weirdness. Uh, real quick, wanted to say we've got some cool stuff we're going to go over today. And, and this is episode 86 of the Productivity Academy Weekly Q&A. Uh, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about trains and how they relate to uh, productivity as well as improving your team's productivity and some good habits uh, just to increase productivity in general. There's a couple I want to touch on. Um, but real quick, uh, if you aren't in a part of the Real World Productivity Group, you can find the link below, um, whether you're watching live, which is great, or if you're checking out the replay on YouTube or something, uh, you can find the link below. And if you are watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date uh, with these videos as well as app reviews, book reviews, um, and then general videos on productivity, time management, automation, team building, all that sort of good stuff. So let's uh, get into it. Uh, I said I was going to talk about trains, and I am. Uh, this is pretty cool. I hopped on a train uh, from Denver to San Francisco, or close to San Francisco, uh, over the weekend. And that was the first time taking a long train ride. Um, I'd planned this a couple months ago. It's something I'd wanted to do for a long time, thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, and it's kind of fortuitous in the timing that after I had planned this, I started looking around. I came across some articles and people were talking about, oh, yeah, trains are great for productivity in the sense that, you know, literally you kind of have to slow down. You may or may not have reception. Uh, you know, you may or may not be able to use your phone, your computer, this, that or the other thing. And I said, oh, this is great. I'd love to read, if nothing else, you know, maybe you'd be able to get some work done and kind of brainstorm on some big projects. Uh, so the way that went uh, was pretty interesting. I ended up doing exactly that. I did a lot of reading. I didn't do a lot of uh, like uh, focused kind of brainstorming or working on projects, but that actually worked out well. And I think in retrospect, it's more about kind of where you're at in terms of headspace. Um, for me, it was great to have some downtime after visiting family. Um, you know, look out literally out of the train, check out the sites, you know, going through the Rockies and then through Nevada and all that, and just to be able to read. And I had a, uh, like a loose list of things with me um, that I could have done. A couple of them I looked over. I got a little bit of work done uh, here and there, but overall it was uh, really good. I'd really recommend it to anyone who feels drawn to that. You know, if you hear this and you're like, oh my God, no way. I never want to do that. Then definitely don't do it. Uh, but I think it was good. You know, I had uh, my Kindle with me, laptop, uh, my phone. Um, I didn't bring an actual physical book just because I was uh, trying to travel light, but I think having a, a few options of things to do instead of kind of boxing myself in and saying, I'm going to do this one specific thing, uh, worked out really well. Uh, so anyways, highly recommend it. Uh, it's kind of a fun way to see parts of the country if you haven't done that uh, before. So let's see. Uh, one of the questions today was talking about how do you improve your team's productivity? I'm going to grab some water real quick. <clears throat> I think that there's obviously this is a big subject um, as far as you know keeping a team or a organization uh, productive you know not just ourselves uh, but I wanted to talk about one specific uh, way we can do this and that's uh, keeping in touch with them right uh, so both from a, a managerial standpoint but also from like a cultural standpoint of your team or your business um, and the shortest way I can think of to explain this and I'll go on a little bit more after that but is to think about yourself um, whether uh, you've had a job where you had you were part of a team or you had a boss um, or just where you worked with other people and, and thinking about, you know, did you like it when somebody invested time in you and find out what you're doing, how things are coming along, not just, you know, report to me what you're doing, but, you know, hey, are you having any roadblocks, are you any obstacles? Um, hey, you're doing this or that really well. Is there anything I can do to help you? Investing that sort of time into your own team is huge. And I know a lot of times we all get busy and you know it, it needs to go a little bit beyond the maybe all hands meeting maybe do a one-on-one -on -one with people and you know certainly there's a limit to how many people you can do that to but if you can do that with your direct reports you know maybe it's just a project manager or a manager of a small team of VAs or maybe you've got a really big team and that's great too that's a great way to do this but investing that time and then having them do it down the chain uh, is really important and one it shows you care uh, which is important that's going to have people invest or be invested more uh, and then also it's going to let you find out literally by asking them you know what's going on with you what are the roadblocks you know staying on top of that and being involved um, and I know for the times I've been part of teams where you know there's more cohesion um, you're definitely more motivated and you feel again like you're part of a team instead of just some person doing something 
so I think that that's a really important one that we can kind of gloss over and we just get busy and sometimes it falls to the side. And I would say not to do that, really build that into your team building. Uh, and if you have a small team, you could do this as kind of an all hands thing uh, where you check in. If you're remote or distributed, uh, there are different ways of doing this. I've started recently doing one where I'll uh, record a short video and then, you know, ask everyone just to reply with their own short video. What have you been up to as far as, uh, you know, the team? What's going on? Is there anything you need help with? Uh, things like that. And, you know, this could take as little as 10 or 15 minutes a week, uh, but really brings everybody together and, you know, just the the conversation back and forth, you might discover, you know, someone enjoys doing something or has already solved a problem that somebody else is working on. So a lot of um, hidden benefits there. All right. So uh, secondly, what are some great habits to increase productivity? Um, man, there's so many. Uh, I will, of course, say a daily review. Uh, that's my go-to answer for good reason. I think that that can form really the foundation of uh, being productive as well as managing your time well. Um, I've got an article, whole article on that. You can uh, just search for Productivity Academy Daily Review and find out more about that. Um, I think that the next building block onto that is, you know, you've done the review, but then adding a real review. So the daily review, I just mean, you know, gathering everything in kind of in the getting things done sense of like, you know, take all your sticky notes, take everything from your different areas, Evernote, this, that, and put it into one space. You kind of prioritize batch, plan your day out and go. But then sitting down, maybe once a week, once a month, however it works for you, looking back and saying, hey, is my daily review working? What is working the best out of that? And how can I get more results from that? Or what isn't working? Or what am I not doing? And why am I not doing it? Is there a reason? Should I just stop trying to do it? Or is there a way I can kind of make myself do it by setting a reminder or, you know, accountability partner or something like that? And just asking yourself these questions, uh, you know, is going to set you apart uh, uh, from where a lot of people stop and it's going to help you advance yourself a lot uh, a lot quicker and you can apply this into so many different situations and again the daily review just that foundation part could just be you know 10 or 15 minutes maybe 30 this review can be the same this doesn't have to be some um, you know really painful process it can be a lot of fun to just say hmm this is what has gone well how can I get more results like uh, from that doing that can I do more of something or uh, is there another way that I could either automate or delegate or do something else like that? So I think that that's a really important habit uh, to get into. And you need, like I said, you can start applying this uh, to other areas, you know, in your business, your personal life. Maybe, you know, fitness is one. Okay, I've been doing well in this area. How can I continue to do even better? This area is suffering. Why is it? What's going on there? Is it something I can either uh, get rid of? Like maybe I've been eating well okay, you can't get rid of eating, but you can try to say, ah, okay, maybe I'll, you know, station snacks in the fridge or like a bag of carrots is up front so that I don't just reach for something else. I mean, that's a very simple example, but that's the idea of just sitting down and you're making these small changes over time. And then you just get that kind of exponential increase where over time it really, really adds up. So good questions today. I think that is going to do it. Keep it pretty short. Uh, but yeah, if you've got any questions, you can always uh, join the group and ask below. Uh, just find the link. You do have to answer a couple questions. You got to, uh, you know, explain how you found the group and whether or not you like productivity. It's a pretty tough entrance exam, but I'm sure you can, uh, you can pass it. So uh, that'll do it for this week, and I'll see everyone next time.